All right. We're going to be looking at the Sisters of Power's dev workshop. Again, there's three parts to it. We've got the actual rework of, or rather, the actual rework of the Parazon. We've got the expansion of the helmet, and we have a rebalancing of our weapons. Let's get into it. Three, two, one, boom. Hello, Teto. It's Rebecca from the Warframe team with a video dev workshop. This dev workshop is going to go over three things. First, the arsenal divide. Second, the Parazon rework. And third, the helmet system and what we're adding there. So reminder, the, the arsenal divide is, of course, going to be the, war, uh, the weapon rebalancing. So let's have a look at what the dealio is with that. All of these changes and additions will be present in the Sisters of Parvos update, which is launching simultaneously on all platforms later. So let's get to it. Let's start by asking the question, what is the Arsenal Divide? Uh, this is how we're kind of explaining the broad goals of the changes we're making. From our point of view, the Arsenal Divide is most evident at high level content. This means when you're on the Steel Path, Arbitrations, mm -hmm. or anything that's just above what the base oh, man, chart haven't, has. I haven't played Arbitrations in so long. Offer. You start to see melee as part of your Arsenal creep up as the best way to kill everything, uh -huh. which is great, but we would like the primary and secondary offerings to be pretty good at killing things too, and at least a strategic option when you're playing a mission. We don't think going into a mission and defaulting to melee only behavior as the best and only way to do things is healthy in simple terms. We would like the other offerings to compete and be a strategic option so that you can switch between melee to secondary to primary or any combination within uh, rather than just being so heavily skewed to melee. We want you to use the rest of your arsenal. So to do that, the divide is gonna be closed by yes, touching some melee mods that we think carry the melee system, but also adding new upgrades to your primary and secondary offerings. So we'll go through each of those changes now and talk about what we're adding. So we've already talked about some of the mods that have been apparently leaked when it comes to adding in mods for primary and secondary weapons. It seems like the general sentiment towards those mods is very, very negative. I don't actually, I, I feel like those mods are fine, but it, but obviously we're going to be looking at now the context with which these mods are going to be jumping in. So I'm of course talking about the ballistic mods, which are, <clears throat> I think they're the primary mods. And then there's also a secondary version of them. I don't remember what they're called. Oh, I know they're also called ballistic mods. The idea being that you get a damage increase if you don't use a melee weapon. Um, obviously there are a lot of people who don't like that idea because they want to be able to get a damage increase and have their melee weapon as well. <laughs> I feel like, you know, making a sacrifice for a power, for a uh, power differential, that could be something that's interesting and, you know, useful for, for um, balance purposes and also just changing up your gameplay if you want. But obviously a lot of people don't like that idea. We'll just have to see what that actually means in terms of the context. This of course is the context that they're about to get into it. The Sisters of Parvos update is going to be taking a look and New changing hair. and talk about what we're adding. The Sisters of Parvos update is going to be she taking a look down. and changing three melee mods. The okay. first melee mod to change is Berserker. Right here on the dev build, you can see that it's now called Berserker Fury, which means it cannot be stacked with other Fury mods, such as Base Fury or Primed Fury. We're also okay. changing the condition of it. It's no longer on critical, it's on melee kill. Criticals are quite easy to achieve and they push the critical meta when you have that condition. So now, you know, a status focused weapon could benefit from Berserker Fury in the same way that critical ones would be skewed towards before. We're also just bringing the actual stats down uh, a bit across the board. So you can get 35% attack speed buff for 10 seconds on kill, which will stack twice, bringing you to a total of 70%. Whereas on public, you can get 25% three times up to 75%. So the cap has just been brought down by 5%. Generally speaking, we think that attack speed as it is, is one of the bigger problems with melee and the type of gameplay it encourages. It doesn't let animations shine. It has little or no strategic use because the speed you're going at is just, you know, one motion encouragement. So for this reason, attack speed is one of the things that we've taken the biggest look at, and we've done it by just looking at the Berserker mod. The I'm... I feel like Berserker Fury is not good. So let me explain. The thing about, the reason why I don't like Berserker to begin with is because there is that downtime where you do not have 
um, attack speed. Now, before, um, hmm, what? Three million plat. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, the D D A B cheating. Anyway, um, the reason. Okay, let me explain. Nerf speed votes by by strength speed. Am I a joke to you? Okay, so let me explain. Um, the reason I don't like Berserker is because there's downtime when it comes to uh, the attack speed. I really, really like attack speed on my weapons. I feel like it just makes weapons flow a lot better. Now, ignore. Uh, now, putting aside the idea that like attack speed, too much attack speed, just completely fucks up um, the, uh, the, the 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 animations and all that jazz. Ignoring that for a second, with Berserker, not have a any moment where I don't have attack speed is when I start to hate the weapon that I'm using. So, for example, if I'm using Sigma and Octanus, if I'm using Galatine Prime, if I'm using um, Anything that's not a glaive, I guess. There will be moments where I will hate the um, hate attack speed. No, 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 no. I hate the lack of attack speed, PB. I hate the lack of attack speed. So, with Berserker, there is a specific downtime where you do not have attack speed, and when I don't have attack speed, when I don't have attack speed, that's when I hate the weapon. Okay. Now, here's the thing, the, f the, 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 the balance right now with Berserker Fury is that you can't stack this with Fury anymore, but you only need to do two melee kills in order to achieve 70% attack speed. So that's two melee kills to achieve slightly more than what Prime Fury currently gives you right now. I always put, try to put prime fury on my builds as much as possible so <clears throat> when you look at it when i look at it like that to me i feel like berserker fury is not going to be good the idea that there is a downtime where i have no um no attack speed followed by if i manage to get two melee kills a lot a bit more attack speed but it's 40 percent slower who's which is which one's 40 percent slower And yeah, now the balance is they made kill instead of crit. Yeah, which is actually, if anything, that's slower. Because it's it's in theory, it should be faster to crit some it should be faster to land a crit than it is to kill someone, usually. Unless you're playing level 30, in which case it's more or less the same. Berserker is 40% slower. 40% slower? What do you mean 40% slower? 5% slower. It's only 35% now. No no no! Stacks up to twice. Stacks up to twice. So, remember what, oh, so, so, um, oh, god damn it. Okay. So, Berserker. The current Berserker is 30, max, 30 all the way up to max 75. The new Berserker, or Berserker Fury, is 35 stacks up to twice, which is 70. So it's only a 5% nominally, nominally, it's only a 5% decrease. Remember, stacks up to twice, Roger. Stacks up to twice, okay? Uh, so it's not 40% slower, it's 5% slower, nominally. It's not 5% slower of itself, it's nominally just 5% slower. Does that make sense? So either way, my point is, the idea that I need to do two melee kills, so there is a downtime of two melee kills, before I can get 15% uh, more attack speed than Prime Flow. Kind of makes me want to just use Prime Flow more than Berserker Fury. Oh, sorry, Prime Flow, what am I saying? Prime Fury. Kind of makes Grand me want to Prime use Prime Flow. Grand Prime being slow uh, AF already more. even with 575 attack speed. Am I a joke to you? No, no, no. Grand Prime is not slow with Prime Fury. I think Grand Prime is absolutely perfectly fine with Prime, with Prime Fury. Hey, Mattis, how's it going? Yeah, I said fucking Prime Flow for some reason. That was stupid. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I that's what I feel like when it comes to this particular mod. I am even less likely to use it. It's still bruh slow. No, not really. No, I don't think so. I really don't think so. That we've taken the biggest look at, and we've done it by just looking at the Berserker mod. The second melee mod to change is Blood Rush. Blood Rush is just getting a lowered stat. It's going from max 60% max rank on the live build 
to 40% on the dev build. The thinking behind this is that as it stands, Blood Rush is a one mod ticket to red criticals. Red True. criticals are the best that criticals have to offer, generally speaking, and the path to it just being one mod feels a bit too strong, so we're reining it in a little bit. Yes, some very high critical melee weapons will still be able to get red crits with just Blood Rush, but those are few and far between. As they should. The thinking here is that the Blood Rush effect still works, but now it goes to 40%. And if you really want to ensure a red crit likelihood, you can use other mods or other specializations to get you there. So you're not so heavily just using one mod to achieve that top tier critical performance. Okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. So let's do some quick math here. Uh, let's do, let's do some, uh, quick math to have a look at Red crit loving babies after seeing the red. No, that's if you over. That's if you overreact as per usual. So let's do some quick math here. Uh, let's crack out. Um, let's crack out a weapon that I like to use that is actually very heavy crit. <clears throat> let's crack out the Grand Prime. Where are you, Grand Prime? The Gatekeeper's Truth. So I use a thingo with this build, don't I? Yeah. So I have Blood Rush right here. So, I'm using Blood Rush on top of Sacrificial Steel. So let's just drop Sacrificial Steel for a second. So the way it works is, um, when you when you get one uh, when you get a combo multiplier of um, times two, then it goes up to one hundred. Then it get one hundred and twenty percent extra critical chance. Is that correct? Is that correct, everyone? Yeah, I'm broke. Whatever. Uh, just put Sacrificial Steel and Blood Rush and Gladiator mod set. Yeah, do all of it. Yeah. Two bits always four, get quick math. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here. I'm gonna crack out the calculator. And uh, when we get our full 12 stacks of Blood Rush, that is 12 times 60%. So what's 12 times 60%? That is a 7.2 multiplier on the crit chance that we have. Is that correct? Oh, plus, plus the amount of crit chance that we already have. So we'll just add that. So when we when we have our 12 stacks of uh when we have our 12 uh 12 hit combo multiplier our 12 stacks of combo multiplier uh we will have 7.2 times more crit chance which means at the end of the day we will have 262.4 percent crit chance on top uh no 262 percent crit chance on the grand prime that's what it's going that that is what it is right now so what the proposal is, is instead of um, 7.2 times more crit chance through 12 stacks of 60% crit chance, we're now doing 12 stacks of 40% crit chance. So chat, what is 12 times 40? I actually know the answer. Quick math, what is, it, what is, it, what is, the, uh, what is 12 times 40? To be honest, I expected more like 35, 30 or 35%. <laughs> so 12 times 40 is 480, i.e. you get 4.8 times more crit chance at the 12 uh, at the 12 hit combo multiplier or 12, not the 12 hit, what am I saying? At the 12 times combo multiplier, you get 4.8 times more crit chance. So you add that on top of the crit chance that you have right now, and you'll end up with a crit chance of 185.6%. So that's the comparison. Hey, Mr. Gunny, how's it going? Uh, we're looking at a difference of 262% crit chance right now. If I have a 12 times multiplier on uh, on the Grand Prime, that is going down from 262.4 to 185.6. So keep that in mind. That's what we're looking at. That's the difference. Okay, guys? So it's... Pretty severe, let's be real here. Like, it's pretty severe, but it's not bad. Like, it, it, it's still, I can still manage with that. Because, at least for me, this Grand Prime tends to also use Sack Steel. So, you know, we'll go with, um, if I do some even more quick math, let me just see here. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, 5.8, so 4.8 times 32 plus uh, 102. 102.4 so with this build moving into the update i will still have 256 percent crit chance so it's not bad 
like, you know, like, I, I'll, I'll manage. I will manage just fine. Speed, haste, moat, and vault speed. Uh, that will also, your effectiveness will also get nerfed any, as well. So it's not necessarily a lull. It is still a feels bad man, but it's not, it, obviously you won't feel it as much because you'll still be off, you'll still be hella fast, just not as fast as you were when you were hella fast. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's not an, it's not an immediate lull. You'll need to keep that in mind, PB. Alrighty. Let me just uh, drop the audio here. Okay, let's continue. So heavily just using one mod to achieve that top tier critical performance. The last mod that we're touching for melee is Condition Overload. This mod is being brought down a little bit to not completely outclass its uh, other damage counterpart known as Prime Pressure Point. So now the ability to get status Focus builds is still there. It's just not performing at the level uh, in which you'll find that the other damage mods generally become completely outclassed. In the scheme of things, these three mods are the only things we're touching for melee. Uh, each of them push melee into a realm of dividing the arsenal. And we'll now go on to the primary and secondary changes on how we're going to bring those up and encourage you to use your entire arsenal. Okay, that's a bit interesting. So here's the thing. If the goal, if the goal is for condition overload, condition overload, if the goal is for condition overload to not hilariously outclass prime pressure point, um, I'm not convinced that this is enough. I'm not convinced that this nerf is enough. So let's have a look. Condition overload right now is 120% melee damage per status type which means two mel two status types and you're already um, you're already outclassing uh, prime pressure point with the with condition overload in this form where it's 80% melee damage guess what two status type two status types affecting a target you're already doing about as much as prime pressure point 5% difference there is a 5% difference but that's minimal in the long run that is minimal you know three can, uh, three status types affecting the target and you're or you're back to hilariously outclassing prime pressure point uh, you can use this on top of prime pressure point but generally speaking people don't use this on top of prime pressure point i i understand why it's a lot of mod energy and frankly not enough mod spaces as well so j typically you won't use this on top of prime pressure point I think this needs to be nerfed a little bit more, honestly, if the goal is for that. Because three status types, I think, is still pretty easy to get. There are weapons that already do that for you. The Scourge is one of them. Uh, melee weapons um, will can also have their have a different status, uh, status type attached to it compared to, say, a secondary, if you want to go that route. Uh, a lot of melee weapons already come with IPS. So if you play a high status... Um, if you play a high status build with a weapon that already comes with IPS, you just chuck on like a couple of 60-60 mods. Hell, chuck in all the 60-60 mods, you have five status types. And they're pretty easy to stack onto an enemy really, really quickly. So, I don't know. I, I feel like if the goal is for prime pressure point to be more, it, to be more widely used, this nerf is not enough. If anything, either more nerfing or, or, uh, prime pressure point needs a buff. Pressure point slash prime pressure point could probably need a buff, uh, if the goal is to actually make it used more. Why does she have 262 plat now? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. But, um, yeah, that's what I think. Right now, it's, the nerf is okay, but... If anything, it's not enough or Prime Pressure Point needs a buff. Changes on how we're going to bring those up and encourage you to use your entire arsenal. Now we're going to go through... She just spent 3 billion plat to get um, condition overload. <laughs> so someone out there has 3 billion plat because they managed to sell pri um, condition overload to D Rebecca. <laughs> That's what happened. 
the upgrade options available for you in the primary and secondary slot of your arsenal. So in my primary, I have the Javlock, uh -huh. uh, and in my secondary, I have the Lex Prime. We are releasing six Arcanes, three for primary, three for secondary, and Arcane Unlockers, so you can start investing in the weapons that you want to bring to that more Steel Path end game level, we'll call it. Weapons are getting arcanes? Damn. Okay. So in the case of the jab lock, let's hop on in. Uh, I want to start using this and having it being even more powerful on the steel path. That means I can slot in an arcane aperture slot. So this will unlock the arcane's arcane aperture. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Why is it called aperture? Aperture refers to a camera function where the where it, it you you um you reduce the amount of light that is being taken in by the camera. And as a direct result, you get to um, really focus, you, you get to um, focus and sharpen the image that comes out of the camera. Or you expand the aperture and therefore, in, and therefore let in more light, but in the process you have much more depth of field. That's what aperture is. Why is this called arcane aperture? I don't understand. This is a weird name. What for this primary weapon? And then I can think about what one to equip. I have earned okay. these uh, by virtue of the dev build, but you'll be able to get them from the steel path, uh, from Acolyte specifically. What I can- Oh, they drop from Acolytes. Acolyte hunting, here we go. Do is I can decide which way that I want to play the job block. Do I, I want exactly it to it be a precision weapon? Maybe it doesn't do so well at precision kills, but if I did manage to get some precision headshot kills, I could further increase the damage output of this weapon. Ooh. And I think the numbers need to go a little bit up, but on uh, but let's have a look here. Arcane, a uh, primary deadhead on precision headshot kill. So I would definitely put this on something like Paris Prime. 120% damage for 24 seconds. Stacks up to three times. Holy shit. 360% damage for 24 seconds. That's pretty big. And you get a 30% headshot multiplier. A 30% extra headshot multiplier, and you lose, uh, and and it gets um, more stable. Hmm. Interesting. And the utility of its headshot multiplier and lowered weapon recoil. If I wanted to do something a bit more dexterous, we could use primary dexterity. This means that whenever I get a melee kill, my primary we uh, weapon's damage is actually buffed as well. So this is a sort of use your whole kit designed arcane. And lastly, we have the primary. <laughs> That's crazy! On melee kill, 60% extra damage stacks up to 6 times, so that's another 360% extra damage for 20 seconds, dude! Holy shit! <laughs> but keep in mind if you're using ballistic mods, then you won't be using primary, primary dexterity. Just keep in mind. If you're using ballistic mods, the idea is you get a damage increase without using melee mods. So you won't be using this arcane. But at that point, you might want to use Deadhead. Also, this is a sort of use your whole kit designed arcane. And lastly, we have the primary Merciless, which is just on kill, do more damage. This is one that encourages you to kill by any means uh, necessary with a weapon that may not be so accurate as the Deadhead. Uh, maybe I don't want to use my melee weapon as much, oh, okay. and I just want this jab lock okay. to wreak havoc, and that would be my option there. Okay. Okay, so long as on kill includes uh, Warframe kills, then yeah, this is actually this is actually pretty cool as well. So it's essentially um, it's essentially um, very so. So Deadhead is extremely specific. You have to use the weapon uh, to do a headshot kill. Dexterity is omega low uh, melee kills. So if anything, this actually works with me if I want to run if I want to run around with like a glaive. And then Merciless is just fucking go nuts and you'll regularly get a lot of damage, but it's only for six seconds. So you have to kill a lot of enemies pretty quickly to get the full 360% damage. So if anything, Merciless is going to be a lot more difficult to maintain, I think. Merciless is going to be very, very difficult to maintain, but it's a, a lot easier to just start getting value out of. Does that make sense? I think that's going to be the idea. The extra reload speed is... Uh, cute. Uh, I assume I, I assume all of this lasts for six seconds, right? Because where it says 
plus 30% reload speed, does that stack infinitely? Plus 100% ammo, ammo maximum, does that stack infinitely? Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, th is there a timer? Like, what, what's the deal with? I see Kuva Brahma of Revival. Kuva Brahma has always been good. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and also it could be a, an arrow mutation arcane for Kuva Brahma. Maybe. Y you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And keep in mind, the Kuva Brahma is the kind of weapon where it can kill like five or six enemies in one go. So if nothing else, you could use this as a sort of intermittent damage increase on the Kuva Brahma but then also just have constant ammo just show up. So it could be useful, hey. Let's farm a thousand plat, spend it on a full deadhead. <laughs> Up in as much, and I just want this Javlock to wreak havoc, and that would be my option there. And like I mentioned, the options are the same for secondary, uh, but in this case, I have exactly. a Lex Prime. I'll unlock the Arcane slot with uh, one of the items that you can get on the Steel Path, and I can make the same choice. In this case, I would probably go Deadhead just because it's a bit more of a pinpoint accuracy weapon. But oh, okay. if I did so want to so, mix so, and match with so my melee to increase the damage output, I could do that as well. Of and of course, arcades. last but not least, there is the Merciless, which is the kill by you know any means necessary with your secondary I don't weapon. Know if that's Maybe a good something idea. that has a bit more of an AOE. I could use the Kuva Nucor, for example, here. Something like that. I don't that. know if that's a good idea yeah. to have. So that would cover all things Arcane that are coming to the chat what do you think i think if since when did primaries get our canes no they're going they're about to what do you guys think i feel like if they're going to do this they might as well just make deadhead dexterity merciless just a single arcane get that can balanced be placed as it on should both. be balanced as it should be yeah um they're, if they're going to do this they might as well just make it just a single arcane that works on both the primary and the secondary at the same time. So instead of primary slash secondary deadhead, just deadhead. Because I can see it now, people are going to be complaining, and frankly, I might even get frustrated as well, that the farming process to get, uh, let's say, R5 deadhead is going to be annoying if I'm trying to get um, primary deadhead, but I keep getting secondary deadhead, or vice versa. I can see that being a solid amount of frustration. Um, so I'm a little bit unsure about whether or not this should be a thing. Kit gun arcane plus gun arcanes. Actually, yeah, will this work on kit guns? Or is this or is this specifically just for regular weapons? That's it. I wonder. Primary and secondary categories of your arsenal. We are also adding a series of galvanized mods. These are very much focused on getting- Okay, these are new. I don't think we ever came across these when it came to, we didn't come across these with the leak. So these are new mods that I even I didn't come across. So this is gonna be interesting the best possible mods you can from playing the hardest content we have available, uh, specifically in the steel path when it comes to base enemy level. I won't go over each mod in this video. This image is available in the description. It's available in the dev workshop, but broadly I can tell you why we made these and what their intended use case is. These exist to reward engagement with different categories of weapons from shotguns to rifles to primaries to secondaries by giving you a way to achieve even greater strength by engaging with different, um, we'll say conditions on these mods. And just for an example, we'll talk about galvanized scope. Galvanized Scope is a better version of Argon Scope. This better version gives you greater critical chance if you can continue to get headshot kills. And that's generally the soul and the design inspiration with each of these mods, uh, all of them which can be found in the Steel Path in Teshin's store. Okay, let's read through them. Galvanized Scope on headshot, on headshot. So Argon Scope, what is Argon Scope at the moment? Argon scope. These are going to be available from Teshin. Wait, these are going to be available from Teshin? And that's generally the soul and the design inspiration with each of these mods, uh, all of them which can be found in the steel path in Teshin's store. They're going to be available from Teshin? Jesus Christ! Holy shit! <laughs> okay, let's see. So Argon Scope right now is on headshot, you get 135% crit chance when aiming for nine seconds. Galvanized Scope, so that's the galvanized version of Argon Scope. 
On headshot, you get 120% crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds. But if you do a headshot kill, it's, it's plus 40% crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds, which stacks up to five times. So if you manage to get five, if you manage to get five headshot kills, which is, you know, in this community, that actually require that that's something that actually requires skill. You know what? This is good. It re it rewards skill. It rewards skill. That's the idea. And things that reward skill, I'm all for it. So the idea of getting five headshot kills in order to get 200% crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Plus 120%, by the way. So let's look at that in terms of the Paris Prime. Let's have a look at that in terms of Paris Prime. So, the Platinum Arrow. I might, oh, wrong one. I might actually straight the fuck up, just drop Point Strike. No, no, I won't, mm, no, I won't drop Point Strike. I might drop Prime Shred. I might just straight the fuck up, drop Prime Shred. So, let's have a look here. The Paris Prime, right? The Paris Prime is a weapon that starts off at the moment with 45% crit chance, okay? So let's do some quick math here. Galvanized scope suggests that when I do a headshot, just a headshot, when I do a headshot, I get 120% extra crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds. So that of course is just basically a free point strike when aiming for 12 seconds. Okay, cool, fantastic, whatever. Um, when I do a headshot kill, I get 200, when I do five headshot kills, I get 200% extra crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds. Okay, so, quick math. Two plus two is four. Quick math. Um, okay, so 45%. So, when I get a headshot, I get an extra 220% of my crit chance when aiming. So, that becomes 2.2 times 45. So, then my, what? No, that can't be right. Did I say free, uh, did I say free? free point strike that's not correct it's not a free point strike sorry that was a mistake so when i do a headshot just a headshot i go from 45 percent i go from 45 percent to 99 percent crit chance just from a headshot right and that's when i aim for 12 seconds okay if i do five headshot kills i get an additional 200 percent crit chance so that is uh plus another two times 45 okay cool so then with five headshot kills as long as i keep aiming for 12 seconds i am immediately at the 189 percent crit chance mark just from this one mod just from galvanized scope if i get five headshot kills so if i have the skill to do five headshot kills we're already we're already dangerously close to getting constant uh, pure, uh, constant, always orange crits. We're almost about there. My Sonos Riven is about to reach its true potential. Oh yeah. Now, on top of that, I have Paris Acrocon from uh, a couple of nights ago. I have Paris Acrocon. 181% crit chance. So we're gonna add that on top as well. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, what is it? Uh, 1.81 times 45. So at that point, I'm already at the 270.45% crit chance. Just from galvanized scope, five headshot kills, and this. But wait, it gets better? Oh yeah, I'm sure it's gonna get better. Because here's the thing, we haven't taken into account point strike yet. <laughs> we haven't even taken into account point strike. <laughs> if I, if I, I'm more likely to remove Prime Shred because um, galvanized scope being a 14 drain V polarity mod, basically means I don't want to get rid of point strike because I still won't be able to fit it in. I'll need to get rid of prime shred if I want to fit it in, in which case then I'll have a slower firing bow, whatever, who, who the hell cares, right? I'll, I'll manage, I'll manage, you know? It, it'll be sad, but I'll manage. So here's the thing. If we add point strike on top of that as well. <sighs> 300 and 37.95% crit chance on a Paris Prime. I want to repeat that. 337.95% crit
crit chance on a Paris Prime, so long as I maintain 5 headshot kills, it's 337.95% crit chance. That is fucking nuts. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if I maintain that level of skill, I will be rewarded with 300%, more than 300% crit chance, easy. So it's time to get better, boys. It's time to stop complaining and start getting Sweet better. Sweet dreams at the game. are made of memes just to took another yeah, level. Yeah, exactly. Time to get better. Get better at the game. Stop complaining. Get better at the game and you will be rewarded. That's the deal. Let's have a look at the other ones. So, Galvanized Chamber is basically a split chamber variant. So, at that point, you can't use split chamber, I'm assuming, because they're essentially the same thing, right? Uh, on multi shot kill, uh, uh, first off, you get 80% multi shot as opposed to 90% multi shot. So, you get a multi shot, so you get a little bit less multi shot to start off with. On kill, plus 30% multi shot for, 12, uh, for 20 seconds, stacks up to four times. What the fuck? That's split flights. Well, not really, but. Uh, wait, but so what's the difference between this and split flights, for example? Oh, split flights is uh, plus 100% times 4. So this one is plus 30% times 4. Okay, okay, so it's not it's not as crazy as split flights. Okay. Whew. <laughs> but still, uh, we're going from 80, we're going from just 90% multi shot, just straight the fuck up to 80% multi-shot, straight the fuck up, and then also an additional 120% multi-shot for 20 seconds if you manage to kill four enemies, which is actually pretty easy to do. So you're essentially looking at 20 seconds where you're pretty much running 200% multi-shot. Straight the fuck up, 200% multi-shot, that's pretty crazy. All right, let's have a look at the other ones. Yo! Galvanized aptitude. Congratulations, everyone. We have we have condition overload for primary weapons now. 80% status chance, straight the fuck up. Okay, cool, awesome. On kills, you then get to start doing 40% damage per status type affecting the target for 20 seconds. This stacks up to twice, which basically means you do two kills, you now have a new condition overload on your status weapon. This is fucking nuts. This is fucking nuts. The staff of Armadale is about to do so much more damage, it's actually insane. It already does a lot of damage because it can give you crit, uh, corrosive and viral procs, or magnetic procs if you feel like it. Kuva Ogres, here comes the boom, exactly. This is straight the fuck up overpowered. But there we go, we have con two kills, two kills. And you have condition overload on primary weapons. That's the deal, that's the deal. Congratulations everyone, we have with two kills. It is what it is. Uh, and it seems like with the other galvanized... Okay, so... Okay, so galvanized savvy is essentially the same thing as galvanized aptitude. Galvanized hell is essentially... Galvanized hell? What the fuck? <laughs> what kind of a name is that? Galvanized hell. Oh fucking megalol. And also a multi-shot on a shotgun weapon is also even more insane, isn't it? Melee. Finally, a worthy opponent, our battle will be legendary. Yeah, so this is going to be crazy. Okay, uh, with shotguns, there's a different one called galvanized uh, galvanized acceleration because shotguns don't have an argon scope type... Um... Wait, shotguns don't have an argon scope type thing? Is that for real? So you get 30% increased projectile speed beam length. Okay, if you kill someone, you get... 30% even more projectile speed beam length stacks up to tw uh, two times. So you manage two kills and you keep those two kills going for 10 seconds. You get 90% extra beam projectile speed. So at that point, your projectile weapon pretty much becomes a fucking, um, uh, what's it call it? Uh, hit scan. If your, if your projectiles are going at twice the speed, generally speaking, they pretty much become a hit scan weapon. Let's be real here. All right, let's continue. 
While not a melee mod change, the Kuva new core is also getting an extremely small change. We are changing the max number of enemies that its beam attack can chain to down to two enemies. It is the most dominant secondary we have. Chat, I don't have a Kuva new core, so what was the maximum amount of enemies that can chain to at the present moment? Four? Okay, so it's basically half. All right. Uh, we're not going to be changing its stats too much. Uh, uh, Kuva Nuko got, Kuva Nuko got nerfed, Kuva Nuko got nerfed, it's already, it's now the worst weapon in the game, it's the worst weapon in the game, worst weapon in the game, Kuva Nuko got nerfed, Kuva Nuko got nerfed, it's the worst weapon in the game now, it's the worst weapon in the game, fuck D, doesn't know how to balance anything, worst weapon in the game, worst weapon in the game, worst weapon in the game, worst weapon in the game. I can already see it now in the forums, I can already see it now. <laughs> Much. It's simply a utility change just to try and rein it in the tiniest bit in terms of its enemy it targeting. Now. And that's the only change we're making to the Koopa Nucor. We're also taking a look at Glaives. At this point in the video, I'd like to draw your- Cedo. Oh, I didn't even fucking realize. Cedo and the- uh, the Cedo and Galvanized Aptitude is gonna be fucking nuts. You're probably gonna end up doing 5 billion damage. Oh wait! Does Cedo count as a... Cedo counts as a shotgun, doesn't it? Cedo counts as a shotgun. Oh, but they have Galvanized Savvy. Yeah, Cedo and Galvanized Savvy. It's going to be crazy. Attention to the Glaives part of the dev workshop, which you can find linked below, and read up on how this is changing for this weapon class. Our aim isn't to change too much. We're just making some general usability fixes based on some attack speed execution issues, as well as differentiating between the fully thrown attack as well as the quick throw uh, in terms of the damage values associated with those. So please check out the full details per Glaive in the workshop below. We're right, making we'll some changes to the way you earn steel essence as well. Uh, this is related to the melee primary secondary part of this video because you will be earning a lot of those items with steel essence. So for the sake of transparency, I wanted to include this in the video. Yeah, keep in mind, glaives are fucking nutso right now, by the way. So, you know, if they're brought down to an acceptable, if they're brought down to a sensible level, I'm fine with that so that when the update does come out and you get the patch notes, you don't see the steel essence section and think, hey, wait a minute, why didn't you mention that earlier? So, wait, let me read this. It does sort of suck, but I usually just apply status, status to one target and melee attack, but now with changes, even now with the changes, primary, secondary condition. Just, uh, anyway, yeah, okay. There's three things that are changing and I'll cover them now. The first is the incursion alerts that give you three steel essence per alert are being increased to five per alert. So the incursions themselves will just simply give you more steel essence. Oh, okay. The second is also pretty simple. Uh, acolytes will simply appear more often. So this will be Ooh. more noticeable in endless missions. Uh, sometimes you can go upwards of eight minutes without seeing an acolyte spawn. And we're gonna lower that to just around the six minute mark with active play for the sweet spot. So you'll just see more acolytes in your missions. Okay, Again, cool specifically endless missions. I'm fine with that. And the last cool. change is the steel essence itself that drops from those acolytes will be despawning after a five minute timer. So if you're in a mission and you're playing around and you see steel path, uh, steel essence drop, you'll want to pick it up or in five minutes it will disappear. So Who's unironically leaving steel essence on the ground for more than half a minute? Who's doing that? What? What does that even mean? Why? Why? I do. Why though? Why though? Uh, idiot tax? Like, to, to, to remove it after five minutes, that is like an idiot tax. Some steel, some steel essence farmers want to get three Smeter buffs. Uh, greedy cunts. Let's be real here, that's just being greedy, man. Jesus Christ. Like, I get it, you wanna, you know, but the point of the Smeeta buff is, it's isn't it called literally like a, a charm? Isn't it, no, isn't it called like a luck charm or something like that? The entire point, the entire point of the, of that Smeeta buff is, it's supposed to be a luck based um, buff, right? So, you know, don't fucking try to game the system and then cry and moan if they put on an idiot tax. Cause this is an idiot tax, that's the deal. <laughs> this is just an idiot tax. Let's continue. I have no so problem with sure this Make sure that you're whatsoever. actively playing and grabbing that steel essence as it drops. 
those are the specifics of the arsenal divide and how we're going to try and go about lessening it with uh, some mod changes and new items for your primary and secondary already. weapons. Yep. We will have a series of login rewards for you depending Sassy on what conditions you meet, which you can read about in the forum post, which we'll be updating if that changes. Oh, right, yeah. What that generally means is that there will be some forma, among other things, available for players who have engaged with these systems uh, at all. So you can look forward to reading about that below. All right, let's go on to the second part of the All changes right, cool. coming to Sisters of Park. So we'll look at the full details. Oh, fuck. We'll look at the full details of the uh, of the uh, weapon rebalancing later. But now they're going to get into Parazon reworks which is the Parazon system rework. Pablo was kind enough to record a video on this, so I'll just throw it over to him. Hello, hello. I want to give you a rundown of the changes we're making to Parazon kills, why we're changing them, and all that. So, um, how it works in live right now is when an enemy gets below 20% HP, there's a chance for them to become open to Parazon kills. If they do, then you can run up to them, stab them with the Parazon, shrink, shrink, and then basically they, they die, and also if you have any Parazon kills, any Parazon mods that are associated with killing, then you'll get the benefits from them, such as, you know, energy ores, uh, health ores, and a few other things. We're actually adding a few more new um, Parazon mods, such as that, so that is part of the impulse towards, uh, you know, revamping the system. Uh, so what are the problems with that? Well, the biggest problem is uh, since you can, you need to get them below 20% and also it's random, you never know if it's going to happen. So imagine you're shooting an enemy Great. and then once he gets below 20%, uh, the marker appears on top of their heads. But by then, most of the time, it's too late. You know, you already riddled them with... Uh, slash procs and toxin procs and yep. you know maybe agreed, abilities agreed, from you agreed. and these your are, these are problems. fellow these are big problems with have the been Parazon. killing them. Yep. Uh, even just stop shooting, you know, reacting in time and stop shooting. We, we, we even saw hard. that like so uh, half an hour practice, ago when I basically uh, the, failed the at Parazon in a couple of guys because often. didn't realize so they were going to get Parazon. So what we want to do is make them more reliable and make them more of a strategic decision if you want to use them or not. So uh, the way it's going to work is now they're going to be guaranteed when an enemy gets below 40%, but only on 40%? Units. Wait, what? Strategic decision if you want to use them or not. So, uh, the way it's going to work is now they're going to be guaranteed when an enemy gets below 40%, but only on certain units. So, on units... Only on certain units? <sighs> I'm not 100% sure about the whole certain units thing, but let's just keep so going. we're considering like the big ones on the faction. So for example, Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay, uh, Bombard, cool. <laughs> Fire, the Scrambos, the Ancients, the enemies that are just, like the big ones that stand out in the factions, all of them will have The this big now, ones, okay. Uh, as well as all Eximus. So um, imagine you- You know what, okay, cool. If I thought I thought when he said certain units, I was about to expect butchers. I was like, what the fuck? How am I supposed, why would I want to paras on a butcher? But no, if it's like corrupted heavy gunners, you bring them down to 40% and then you can paras on them. Okay. I mean, that makes corrupted heavy gunners even more hilariously easy to kill, but okay, sure. I can work with that. That works, that makes sense to me. Yeah. You see a heavy gunner in the distance, you have the blood for energy mod installed, which gives you an energy orb whenever you get a paras on kill. Then you say, okay, you know what, I need some energy. So you start shooting the heavy gunner and running towards her, knowing full well that once she's below 40%, she will be open, then you can just stab her, and boom, you get some energy back. So that way you can actually, like, plan so and decide when you want to do that. Okay, so they've effectively made killing heavy enemies so much easier now, because you know, because... Because uh, all heavy enemies effectively have a, a health pool of 60% uh, now. So you, that's, that's, that's the reality. All heavy, all heavy enemies effectively now have 60% health, um, effective health now. Um, and when you want to use this type of kill. So let me show you how it works in action. Alrighty. Over here we have Yareli. Uh, we have some uh, enemies that are not considered the big ones, so like a butcher. So, oh, <laughs> as you can see, he's not very big because he just died. Uh, let me let me give him a, a few lob taps. There you go. I think that's well. Uh, okay, that's cool. below forty percent for sure. And as you can see, he doesn't get the, the thing because he's not one of the big units. Um, but over here we have a heavy gunner, and there it is right. So you see, as a marker, then oh, okay. I do the person, and it triggers the the effects. Wait, um, hang on. So yeah, as you can see, can it's, I still uh, just outright kill him? Reliable. 
There it is. Oh yeah, I can still outright kill him. Okay. Now, we did do another big change with this, which is um, before, impact procs used to increase the chance that that random proc between 20 and 10% would happen. So uh, now, obviously, that doesn't work anymore because now the chance is guaranteed, so there's no use on in increasing it. So instead of that, what it does is it actually increases the range. So instead of triggering when they're at 40%, if you get one impact proc, it goes up to 44%. Two impact procs, 48, and it keeps growing up until 80%. So that means... Um, Wait! I'm sorry, hold on. Wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Growing up until 80%. Does that make impact status weapons overpowered? Chat, does that make high status impact weapons hilariously overpowered all of a sudden? Because the idea then, if you use that against a heavy enemy, you only need to do 20% of their health. You need to take out 20% of their health, and as long as you get those 10 impact procs, it's instant kill with the powers on. That's fucking nuts, dude! What the fuck? <laughs> That's insane! Super slow, though? It's not gonna be super slow when you're in a high- It's not gonna be a super slow thing when you're in a steel path mission. In, like... If you if you're doing a listen, if you're doing a steel path daily and you're going up against heavy gunners, they're pretty tanky. They're pretty tanky. You know? Um So it's I'm I I'm almost certain it's gonna be faster to do 10 impact procs with like an impact shotgun or fuck it, like a high status weapon, high, high status, high fire rate weapon that has some, that is impact based. I can't think of one at the present moment. Oh, Sonos Prime. You could do that with Sonos Prime even if you like go whole ham into the impact procs. That's crazy, man. Just keep going. Okay. So that means um, if you have a weapon that has a lot of status and that also has a lot of impact, such as the Estilla here. It's still a prime. Wait, it's still a prime? Yes. It's still a prime. Yeah. Yeah. A still a and a still a prime. You can actually get uh, the heavy gunner to go into the spasm mode when it's below 80%. So As you can see, it has a ton of health, and I can just finish it off. So that, that is disgusting. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. <laughs> you do 10 impact procs, get their health down by 20%. You don't even have to do fucking nothing. And then you paras on them. That's crazy, man. Well, you can actually decide to build into impact. That is you fucking, basically get rid that is of fucking overpowered, of, dude. Like, uh, important units pretty early on in the fight. That's a way to get them out. Uh, you know, as a, as a different alternative to the, the traditional, you know, reduce the armor in order to be able to kill them. So as you can probably imagine, one of the concerns we had was um, if you can one-shot enemies once they're below 80%, uh, that's pretty crazy once you get into the really high levels, you know? Yeah. And some people like to fight level 5,000 enemies and things like that. It would be pretty intense if they could actually one-shot them. Uh, well, not one-shot them, but get them below that 80% and then kill them. So uh, basically we have an extra thing there, which is uh, the, the threshold is 40% up until 25,000 health. So if, uh, if an oh. enemy has, for example, 100,000 health, well, that 25,000 health would be 25%. Uh, so basically the threshold is a little kind of squished if the health is really high. Now, this only applies for like really, really, really high enemies. Uh, depends on the unit specifically, but I did check for the heavy gunner specifically. And for, for this to matter, it doesn't only, it doesn't kick in until level 415. <laughs> I can see it now. I can I can see people I can see people in the forums and in the subreddit being like, "This is going to be a huge problem." D, why did you have to add a health, thresh health threshold? Don't you know that people who play five 
five day long fucking mot missions are going to be in such a bad Ray. spot now you fucking pieces of shit like fucking re what do you mean this only starts to kick it at level 400 don't you know that we like to play against enemies that are level 99,999 fuck you d you don't even know how to balance your own fucking game dude <laughs> i can see it now in the forums it's gonna happen <laughs> it's 40 so it's 80 percent it, it so the threshold is whatever the the threshold caps out at 2500 health so okay <laughs> was it 2500 or 2500 i can't remember but the cap caps out at a certain amount of health okay like that so uh, if you if you fight uh, level 415 heavy gunners often then this little part matters to you otherwise it's just 40 percent all the time yeah um so in other words for you and me it's 40 it's 40 percent all the time that's the deal it's 40 percent all the time no ifs no buts that's the deal so yeah uh, that's about it i think that kind of wraps up the whole information uh, we are doing a few aesthetic changes here and there you know maybe tweaking the sound a little bit on the effects things like that uh, and as i said we're making some new mods already just worked no it doesn't matter if you're no 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 it doesn't matter if you're playing for that long because you're already in a comatose vegetative state you're already you're already half asleep so whether or not a corrupted heavy gunner dies in Three uh, seconds. Shuck it, duck it. Or a corrupted heavy gunner dies in like a lot more than three seconds. It doesn't really matter. You're already half asleep. Because you're already in a 10 hour survival mission. If you're not if you're not on a bed, if you're on a chair, you're already gone ski. That's the deal. To kind of beef up the system. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Nice. Big thank you to Pablo for sending that video and Oops. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Big thank you to Pablo for sending that video. And now we'll go on to the helmet system and what we're adding. That was in a YouTube sub, yeah. Ups. The third and final part of this video takes Ooh, you through time. what we're adding to the helmet system. If you don't know, the helmet system gives you the ability to infuse and subsume Warframe abilities. So every Warframe has one ability that you can take and put on other Warframes. This is... Wait, no. They're not going to expand it so you have to so do two abilities. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Something we released in the Heart of Deimos update with Sun no. okay, on the Necrolisk. <laughs> he can give you the upgrade segment to do this system. But he has something Mega else now, broken. and that is a invigorations upgrade segment for your helmet. What that means is once you go to Sun, spend the standing to get the helmet upgrade segment, you can build it and install it and start engaging with helmet on a weekly basis. Helmet will have what we'll call a flavor of the week, and three Warframes will be eligible for week-long buffs. This week, on my count, it's Gauss. I can sit and infuse Gauss to get the primary damage buff and this armor buff. I can bring Banshee to the table to get ability strength and ability efficiency buffs, or I could bring Excalibur and grab uh, the melee critical chance buff and a heal rate for Excalibur. These are gonna be determined at random and their whole intent is to give you an option to change it up. Maybe you haven't used Banshee in a while and you might have some fun with that power I'll strength buff. Sorry, <laughs> or maybe you know Excalibur is your favorite Warframe and to get even more melee crit chance would be a dream come true for you. Holy fuck. Whatever it is, the Helmet system will now have the Invigorations upgrade, which is something that you'll be able to install in Sisters of Parvos. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I have to go and get that, don't I? Let's just, let's just listen to that again. To get the Helmet upgrades. What that means is once you go to Sun, spend the standing to get the helmet up. Wait, your helmet. Oh. What that means is once you go to Sun, spend the standing to get the helmet upgrade segment, you can build it and install it and start engaging with helmet on a weekly. Wait, so Sun is so the Sun in Deimos is going to have another thing that you can get, right? Is that the idea? Is that the idea? So I have to go, so it's standing base, so that makes it a little bit easier, right? So it's standing base. Let's quickly go to Deimos and let's have a look at what I've got. So I have to go to Necrolisk.
Okay. Here we go. So if I go to this, if I go to Sun, or as is known, Kermos. I have the oh, sorry, honor of Kermos. The name and a little taste of freedom. Whatever you are doing out there, so Tenno, in here, keep at it. <clears throat> let's see. So the helmet system blueprint is a thing, which will require a few bits and bobs to build as well. Now, according to Rebecca, you have to go and get the helmet upgrade segment. Is that the idea? So, oh god, bit right dead. Why? Why is my? No, everything's fine on my end. What do you mean? Okay. So I will also okay. So at that point, I'm gonna need to farm some bits of bob. Oh, because Sun is selling it, that also means I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to farm some shit from Demos. Okay, we'll have to figure out what we need to farm later on. Sun's gonna have a segment for that instrument. Okay, Roger that. Okay. Indeed. Bye In that case, now. um, yeah. Cool. That's fine. Then uh, when when the update drops, we'll be going to Demos. We'll be um farming whatever it is I need to farm in order to get that segment and hopefully uh, I won't need to farm a whole lot hopefully I will have Hiya, mostly tin enough suit. this your first time 187 omega lol fucking endo who cares alrighty so uh, let me just do that or I could bring Excalibur and grab uh, the melee critical chance buff and a heal rate for Excalibur these are going to be determined at random, and their whole intent is to give you an option to change it up. Maybe you haven't used Banshee in a while and you might have some fun with that power strength buff. Or maybe you know Excalibur's your favorite Warframe and to get even more melee crit chance would be a dream come true for you. Hold on. I'm also noticing on the top left hand corner. Uh, yeah, it's not being blocked, so I think you guys are also noticing on the top left hand corner. How many, uh, there are many more better officers available. The maximum right now is in fact 10. So as you can see here on the top left hand corner, the maximum is 10. And you're telling me there's going to be more? There's going to be more? There's going to be more? What could that possibly mean? Let's find out. Whatever it is, Sorry, my bad. One sec. Invigorations upgrade, which is something that you'll be able to install in Sisters of Parvos. We are also adding a way to give you a little bit of control over what Warframes receive invigorations. After you've done 10 invigorations, which will be tracked here in the UI, your equipped Warframe will be the one that receives the next invigoration. So if you've gone through 10, your favorite Warframe's Ember and she's never showed up. If you equip Ember and after your 10th invigoration, you'll be able to ensure that she is the one that receives that week's invigoration. Oh, There's more okay, okay, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a cycle. So you do 10 and then you get a, I guess you get like a, uh, I guess you get one, one chance, one week where a specific Warframe that you want gets an invigoration and then you just do it and then you start again. Go through 10 invigorations, go through, get one. Go through 10 invigorations, get one. Okay, cool, that's fine. Or coming with the Helminth and a keen Tenno would have noticed that there's more notches of ranks because we are adding 15 ranks to the Helminth system. Each of these ranks unlocks a corresponding universal Helminth ability that you'll be able to put on a Warframe of your choice. I'm gonna hide myself real quick and we'll take a look at these together. So let's take a look at what rank 11 unlocks, the Parasitic Armor ability. This allows you to sacrifice shields to reinforce armor for a period of time. Sounds like shit. Then at the 12th rank, we have uh, Hideous Resistance, which grants yourself immunity to status effects. At the Unnecessary. Uh, Spellbind is already a thing. 13th rank, we have Voracious <clears throat> Metastasis, which consumes energy to heal yourself, granting matching energy to each ally. The Wait, so it's a self-heal? but you also give energy to everyone. Interesting. 14th ability is the Sickening Pulse, which emits a pulse that adds stacks to status effects already afflicting enemies, <laughs> except leader toxin effects, which are duplicated with fresh timers. And last but not least- <laughs> Okay. So you drop a bunch of corrosive, magnetic, and viral procs, just a couple, 
and you activate sickening pulse and you get even more corrosive viral pro i don't know this doesn't sound particularly useful let's be real here the golden instinct at the 15th rank which sends out a short-lived void spark that is drawn toward the nearest medallion ayatan unscanned curia or unscanned fragment what? so that's for the treasure hunters out there hi i'm back that are looking for a way to optimize their okay. ayatan farming and okay. or their medallion hunting because maybe they want to get all the new emotes that are coming in this update so if you engage with the helmet system you'll be able to unlock these uh, holy five shit rank. okay so the 15th one sounds pretty insane uh, it's basically treasure hunter. It's basically a treasure hunting one. Okay, that's cool. I like the fifteenth one. The okay, so the eleventh one doesn't sound terribly useful because, or not. I don't know. I might be wrong. Uh, hideous resistance seems completely unnecessary because spellbound exists. Uh, you could just uh, helminth a Titania, and then you basically have the same thing. You basically become immune to status effects. Point blank. That's it. Whatever. Uh, uh, Voracious metastasis could be interesting. Sickening pulse. Uh, Sickening Pulse has a small chance of being interesting, but I get the feeling that for the most part, you're not going to really want to use it. But the 15th one is going to be crazy. Yeah. And with that, our video dev workshop has wrapped up. Ah. Thank you very much for watching. We covered a lot and you can expect everything and more in our Sisters of Parvos update on all platforms. We're aiming to launch early summer-ish, so we'll see you then. And once you have it in your hands, you can let us know what you think. So thanks, Tano. Alrighty. Let's time out PB. Okay. <clears throat> I haven't I haven't done one of these in a long time, so it's uh Time out PB three hundred. No, it's 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 five minutes. PB requested. Oh, what? Oh no, sorry, time out PB two K PB two kick three hundred requested. There we go. Um, okay, so, let's see, did I miss you review the new arcane changes? Changes? Or the new arcanes point blank? What do you, what do you mean by changes? Okay, so, we have the full, uh, okay, we have the full, uh, dev post on the powers on, re powers on rework. Uh, but I think Pablo covered it pretty well. Um, yada, 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 yada. I'm just going to skim through it because I think Pablo covered it pretty well. So first off, all XMS units are going to be af uh, affected by this. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at heavy gunners, bombards, scrambus, and fucking nullifiers. Um, so that's cool. I would have thought that corpus text would be part of this, but okay, whatever. And uh, ancients. Okay. Uh, we have some new mods coming in as well. Yeah, and no YouTube as well. Yeah, that's right. There's no YouTube. So we have five new powers on mods that are coming. So we have one called Power Drain. 100% chance for your next ability cast to gain 50% ability strength. Ooh. Ooh. So that's effectively a uh that's like a growing power except for your power powers on okay cool <clears throat> malicious code 50 50 percent chance for enemies within 50 meters 15 meters to cower in fear for eight seconds oh so it's a hot i think that's for uh wait hold on would this be for um this be a this would be a yeah no okay 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 cool but would this be for Oh, no, if you power on kill someone, then there's a 50% chance that everyone within 15 meters will then basically be hard stunned. Okay, that's an energy conversion. What do you mean? That's not an energy conversion. That's power. No, your next ability after you kill someone with a power zone, I think, is going to give you 50% ability strength. And hard reset. Execute three mercy kills within 40 seconds. Revive a fallen sentinel or companion. Everyone and their mother who was bitching and moaning about uh, uh, repair dispensary can shut the fuck up now. Hard reset is a thing. Hard reset is a thing. Uh, does it default to seconds when I time out? I think it's five minutes default. In terms of bonus, it's the same as energy conversion except... Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's just that it doesn't stack. That's the difference. But yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. <clears throat> Everyone and their mother who bitched and moaned about repair dispensary can shut the fuck up now because hard reset is a thing. So stop complaining and get better at the game. That's it. Uh, apparently, we're also going to get some uh, design con council contributions. So you can do Swift Mercy, where Mercy kills are faster by 50%. Cool beads. Uh, Firewall, you... Oh! Firewall, you get to have a 75% damage reduction when you're hacking something. That's actually not bad. I'm... Mm. Because Roger wanted to time out Miso. Uh, hey, 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 uh, Josh, give it a shot. See what happens. Give it a shot. See what happens. Okay, so... This is going to be interesting. Um, I feel like I'm still going to keep blood for energy. Or not. I don't know. I'll probably keep blood for energy, and I might actually use firewall. Uh, oh... But all my parallel mods just seem so useful. All of my parallel mods are just like... The ones I use right now, they're just so useful. Maybe I'll get rid of blood for energy because I... Uh, I don't know. Do I want to get rid of... Oh, this is so much... Oh. Now this is actually tricky because I don't know what I want to use. Um, I have blood for energy, runtime, untraceable. Runtime and untraceable are super duper useful because as soon as I... Uh, hack something. I basically get to run around for a very long time. 300 seconds. Yeah, 300 seconds. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's five minutes. Blood for energy is also useful. But at the same time, malicious code? Uh, because I tend to use dispensary a lot, I might actually find malicious code to be more useful for me than blood for energy. Or hell, even power drain. <sighs> I don't know. You're going to be disappointed. We'll find out. We'll find out. Because you'll find, Ricky, I'm not like most people. I'm not necessarily disappointed by nerfs. So we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Let's have a look at the um, helmets. Let's have a look at the helmet side as well. So the helmet is being expanded. Uh, I think they've pretty much explained a lot of it. So we have five more ranks and we're also using invigorations. Cool, cool, cool. So we've already talked about the um, the invigor uh, sorry, the five new abilities of which I think uh, this one, uh, so of which I think hideous resistance is pretty much useless because uh, uh, spellbound exists. Voracious metastasis could be interesting. Sickening pulse could be interesting, but I don't really see much of a reason to use it. And golden instinct could be insane. Uh, invigorations, I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, so you need to go to you need to visit Sun in the Necrolisk to get the uh, upgrade. Okay, cool, that's fine. So I think uh, they seem to have so one offensive and one slash one utility or defensive. So, for example, you could end up with an entire week where your Zephyr is immune to status procs. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Okay, they're random, they're, they're RNG based, that's cool, whatever. Um, as of right now, the segment will cost 30,000 Entrati standing and will be available once you hit the rank of family. Alrighty, so as of right now, as of right the fuck now, so... Where does that put me? The big question is, do I need to build it? Or do do I need to do anything to build it? What will I need to farm in order to actually build the damn thing? Or is it just straight up buy it done? That's the big question. There's no, there's no mention of some sort of building material requirement. So I'd be curious to see if that's the case. <clears throat> Josh, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, wait, no. All right, PB, because... Wow, PB. Remind me never to uh, never to avenge you ever again. Damn. Okay, so how much how much standing do I have? Let's see. Hmm. Maybe later. Trade tokens. So how much standing do I have at the moment? I have 100,000 standing. Now, apparently... Segment is only going to cost 30,000 standing. 
so I'm home free. Excellent. I don't have to do As anything in this regard. Wonderful. Nice to see you. Absolutely. For, for, for. Fantastic. I don't have to do anything in that regard. All right, let's have a look here. Um, I'm going to bring the music back up. Uh, one sec. <clears throat> oh, wait, no, let's not do that because I'm recording this for YouTube. Okay, so... Um, this will be expanded throughout the next week as more questions come in. Does your helmet rank automatically increase when the five new ranks? No. Invigorations will give XP affinity towards a helmet in addition to normal feeding a subsume. There won't be any automatic rank ups versus the current on the current versus new as it should. I don't know why anyone would expect that. Are invigorations options only chosen based on the warframes you own? No. Invigorations pull the entire roster. Okay. <clears throat> okay, cool. So you better have every single Warframe available. Well, at least one version of every single Warframe. Otherwise, you might find yourself with invigorations that you simply cannot fucking use. Um, okay. Finally. The uh, Arsenal Divide. Here we go. The big one. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. When choosing a weapon for a mission, the channel have a lot to consider. Yada da yada da yada yada da yada 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 Okay, cool, cool, cool. Average player will ask themselves at least one question. Yada da yada yada yada. Enter melee questions and equally more important, equally importantly, the bots you choose. Yada da yada da yada. We feel that gun stats are in a good place. Gun stats are in a good place. Okay, interesting. It's the mods that are lacking. Inversely, some melee mods are too strong, etc, 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 etc. Okay, melee mod. So we're looking at some melee mod nerfs, some weapon changes, primary, secondary, arcanes, galvanized mods, login items. Okay, so they already did a pretty good job of explaining that like some shenanigans are happening when it comes to melee mod nerfs. We already know that Berserker, Blood Rush, Condition Overload, they're getting slightly nerfed <clears throat> to a point where they're still pretty insane, but not as insane uh so they've already talked about that cannot stack with fury that's kind of why i feel like berserker fury is not going to be good but you know it is what it is uh they've already talked about blood rush uh they've also talked about condition overload i still think the condition overload nerf is not enough if the goal is so if the goal is for something like prime pressure point to be more useful um comparatively like it's still not enough okay here we go glaive changes so according to um According to someone, who the fuck was it? According to Arachnus Deathicus, I believe it was. No, sorry. According to Ricky, no, it was Ricky. According to Ricky, the glaive changes are gonna make me sad. In late 2020, we reworked the Glaive melee class to be more powerful and comfortable to use. Overall, we feel these changes had their intended effect as weapons like Glaive Prime have skyrocketed to newfound ability to inflict huge damage using heavy attacks. True. That is true. That is absolutely 100% true. However, these changes also introduced a common issue. Players with high melee attack speed will sometimes accidentally throw their Glaives when trying to perform simple melee strikes and the catch and release mechanism resulted in multiple unintended throws. Really? In reviewing our melee system, we felt it was a good opportunity to address this. Okay, so that being said, our two changes to our glaives go hand in hand. Here we go. The heavy attack windup speed being increased from 0.6 to 1.2 seconds. Damn, okay. <clears throat> With more time on the windup, it's actually, it is much harder to accidentally throw your it's actually it's much harder to accidentally throw when you're trying to swing. With this increased wind-up, players are also more, more capable of performing quick throws. Right now, the damage on quick throws is very close to fully charged. So in order to encourage a more meaningful choice, our second change is to reduce quick throw damage to 50% of the maximum charge. What does that mean? So... That exchange. Okay, so what does that mean? Quick throw damage is going to uh, quick throw, quick throw. Okay, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to figure out what this means. Is it just the damage in general? Because 
They're talking about quick throw versus full charge. Does that mean that there is a... Well, wait, what's the difference between quick throw and full charge? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Let's find out. The overall damage output. Okay. Okay, so that's quick throw. That's full charge. So, so that's quick throw. Okay, as opposed to full charge. So you're telling me that quick throw currently has the same amount of damage as full charge? Okay. Okay. So let's have a read of what the actual thing is. <clears throat> quick throw damage. Right now the damage on quick throws is very close to fully charged. So in order to encourage a more meaningful choice, our second change is to reduce quick throw damage to approximately 50% of the maximum charge. Okay. So let's look at the Glaive Prime. If you do a quick throw, you're no longer doing 328 damage, you're doing 180 instead. Am I reading that correctly? When you do radial damage, that's from the explosion, then you do 296 instead of 492. So let me, let me understand if I'm on, let me see if I can understand this. Okay, so, oh, let's not use this. Right? Let's use a uh, corrupted heavy gunner. So, because if my understanding of this is correct, I have no problem with these changes. So if I quick throw, hang on. So if I quick throw, so that's that's a that's a full charge. So if I quick throw. Interesting. So the premise right now is I should be doing the same amount of damage more or less. Hmm. I'm a little bit confused by what these changes. What's the premise here? They nerfed the damage, and then there's the base damage. But what I'm trying- no, no, no. What I'm trying to understand is, is the change a difference between something called a quick throw? So that's a quick throw. Versus a full charge. Oh wait, this is not even a fucking... This is the wrong build that I'm using. That explains a lot. One sec. So, using the... Using the heavy explosion build that I normally... That I had. So... The theory is... There is a... That's a quick throw. Which basically did the exact same amount of damage as my short video on Glaives. So you're telling me that's now going to do 50% the damage. Whereas if I were to do what is called a full charge. That remains more or less the same.
Is that the idea? If I do, if I do a quick throw, quick throw, quick throw. As opposed to a full charge. Then I will do 50% less damage. Is that the idea? If that's the case, I have no problem with these changes. Is it really hard though? To do a full throw? No. You just basically hold it down. You don't even have to time it. It's not even timing. You just hold it down. Quick throw, less damage, full charge, slower. Eh, slower by like a uh, half, slower by like a tiny bit, that's it. It's only slower by that tiny bit. Oh, the damage? The damage nerf? Oh, it's 50%. So you go from 328 direct hit to 180. You go from 492 uh, radial damage to 296. So it's basically a 50-50, it's basically a 50 split. Like 50% gone. But that's if you do quick throws. I think that's the idea. So the big one is just going to be the heavy attack wind up being increased from 0.6 seconds to 1.2 seconds. Ooh, da da Damon? Damon. Damon1945, thanks for following on Twitch. My guy. Anyway, um. This is fine. I think I have no. I think I'm. I think in the end I'm gonna have no problem with this. We'll wait for the. Well, I will wait for the update to drop so that I can be absolutely sure. But I get the feeling I'm not. I'm not gonna care. Slow attack speed is still good. Just long wind up. Yeah. I think in the end I'm not going to worry. I. I this won't. This won't bother me at all. I think. Uh, I think the reason why people might feel bothered is because they might not understand what the difference is between quick throw and full charge. I might not necessarily understand if there is a difference either, but I think there is. That's why there is a. That's why they're using these terms. I think the idea is if you hold down your melee button all the way until a full charge to throw the glaive, you'll still be doing the exact same amount of damage, and it's still a lot of fucking damage. I didn't even know you could quick throw. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know that quick throw was a thing. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, primary, secondary, uh, primary, secondary weapons. Um, so we've already talked about the new arcanes. They're all pretty insane. Uh, we've talked the secondary arcanes are more or less the same. We've already talked about the galvanized mods. They're all pretty fucking nuts. Here we go. Uh, as with many of our large scale reworks and past changes, we want to honor the investment of time and resources our players have put into their arsenal. Since these changes are both wide sweeping and precise, we have some general login inboxes planned for all players. Everyone who is past Mastery Rank 5 will receive 5 build former, just like that. Everyone who is past Mastery Rank 5 will also receive a 3 day affinity booster. Everyone who has a Kuva New Core will also receive a two build, with an extra 2 build former. Anyone who owns any Kuva Lich weapon at any given point in time, or has converted a Kuva Lich, or has an active Lich at the moment, will get one Requiem Ultimator, which is a new item to taunt a Lich or a Sister of Parvos into battle. So you get to summon them into battle. Anyone who has converted a Kuva Lich or has vanquished a Kuva Lich will get all, which is a Requiem Wildcard mod, which is basically a a Requiem card that can be used for whatever the fuck you need. In closing, Sisters of Parvos will bring these changes on all platforms and all of that good stuff. We have some FAQ. Can you buy Arcane Can you buy Arcane Unlockers with Platinum? No, this is not a Platinum market icon item. They are earn items through Steel Path on assist. Oh, so you can get okay. Okay. You get Arcane Unlockers from Teshin's shop. Boom. Done. Where did the Arcanes drop? They dropped from Acolytes. Oh, Acolytes have a 100% chance to drop one of the six. So essentially you have uh, a 16.66% six, or something like that. Do kick guns get two arcane slots? Ooh. Yes, they do. Kit guns have two arcane slots now. Damn. That's crazy. Alrighty. Hell yeah, brother. You know what? Here's the thing, I put out a uh, poll, 
I put out a poll uh, like yesterday and I asked people, what do you think about these changes? Are you going to be, uh, how do you feel you're going to, how do you think you're going to feel about these changes? Do you predict you'll like most of these changes? Do you think you'll dislike most of these changes? Do you predict you'll, there will be half the changes you like or dislike? Do you believe that there should be no nerfs, only buffs, DE, question mark, question mark? I think I can safely say, without a shadow of the doubt, I think I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I like most of these changes. I actually do like most of these changes. Yeah, I think most of these changes are pretty good. Some of, there's maybe, I actually, I can't, I can't, in terms of the melee, in terms of the primary weapon, secondary weapon, melee changes, I can't think of anything where I would call it a real misstep. Even the glaive nerf, I wouldn't really even call it a real nerf. It's just a nerf to people who do quick throws, but I didn't even know the quick throws existed. It's not going to be a nerf for me. I always do a full charge. So I have no problem with this. Um... The arcane ideas are pretty awesome. Uh, the Parazon changes are insane. Uh, the helmet changes are pretty cool, although I will say that uh, some of the new helmet uh, ideas still not particularly useful. But then again, a lot of the helmet abilities from the actual helmet itself, not terribly useful. So, you know, that just, that's just par for the course of anything. But I, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I have no, I have no real issues. And even playing field, if it makes guns in melee on an even playing field, it's probably a good change. Yeah, I guess so. What I really, really like, what I really, really like, I'll tell you what I like, what I really, really like, so tell me what I like, what I really, really like, I'll tell you what I like. I really, really like the galvanized mods. I really, really, really like the idea that these are mods that give you a humongous, humongous power spike, provided you have the skill to keep it going. I like that. I like the idea of things giving you massive, unwieldy, unyielding power spikes, so long as you have the skill to not only make it work, but to also keep it going. I really, really like that. Yes, there's also condition overload for primary weapons now, that's also a thing, but I'm not too worried about, I, I'm not, I don't really care about that for the most part. The big thing is, Something like galvanized scope, that's what I'm very interested in. The idea that I can get 300% power strength purely from landing a bunch of, oh, sorry, power strength? 300% condition overload. Uh, condition overload, what the fuck am I saying? 300% critical chance. Provided I can continue landing headshots and landing headshot kills. I like that. I like that a lot. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay, so for the for the eventual YouTube video that hopefully will be out sometime this week. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you like this video, hit that like button. Let, let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace.